Hello everybody. Nobody who has chosen the easy path of hate has ever achieved fulfillment and success in life. I want to talk to you today about the rising hate in India, hatred for Muslims, hatred for Pakistan, hatred for the British and hatred for Winston Churchill. And jealousy of Americans and America. Nobody who has chosen the easy path of hate has ever achieved fulfillment and success in life. Winston Churchill cannot be equated to Adolf Hitler based on their historical roles and actions during World War II. The British were not the evil empire. Overwhelmingly Indians and the Indian subcontinent benefited from European and British merchants and the British Raj. I don't want to preach to the choir here today. I want to talk to Indians out there who might have already stumbled into the wrong direction, into the wrong path. I want to talk to you if you've heard some conspiracies about British or people of any race or gender orientation and thought, ah, that makes sense to me. I want to talk to you if you found yourself thinking about anyone is inferior and out to get you because of their religion or the color of their skin or their gender. I don't know the road that has brought you here, but I've seen enough people throw away their futures for hateful beliefs. So, I want to speak to you before you find your regrets at the end of that path. Nobody who has chosen the easy path of hate has ever achieved fulfillment and success in life. Why Indians particularly Hindus have hatred for Muslims in India or Hindu Indians hating Pakistan or atrocities committed in Manipur or Hindus hating Sikhs in Punjab who want their own country Khalistan. Or Hindu Brahmin hating untouchables Dalits. Or atrocities committed by Indian army in Kashmir. Or Indians hating the British or Indians jealous of Americans. I want to talk to you today about the rising hate we've seen all over India. Nobody who has chosen the easy path of hate has ever achieved fulfillment and success in life. India's diversity is a strength, and harmony among communities is vital. India has a shared history that transcends religious, regional, and linguistic divides. The Indian constitution guarantees equal rights for all citizens, regardless of religion, caste, or ethnicity. Most people in India live together peacefully and contribute to the nation's growth. Blaming an entire group for the actions of a few is unfair. Complex geopolitical factors often underlie regional issues. Jealousy and resentment can hinder personal growth and social progress. Appreciating others' successes and working hard for one's own goals is more constructive. Encouraging unity and understanding builds a better society. Embracing differences and working together for the common good is essential. Each individual bears a responsibility to promote tolerance and peaceful coexistence. Winston Churchill cannot be equated to Adolf Hitler based on their historical roles and actions during World War II. The Bengal famine of 1943 occurred during World War II and resulted in the deaths of many people in the Indian province of Bengal. While the Bengal famine was a tragic event, attributing it solely to Churchill oversimplifies a complex historical context. The wartime situation affected food distribution and availability across regions, including India. The British government, including Churchill, did send food and famine relief efforts to India in response to the crisis. Factors such as war priorities, logistical challenges, and transportation issues contributed to food shortages. It's important to consider that Churchill's decisions during the war were influenced by the broader wartime circumstances and challenges. To hold Churchill solely responsible for the Bengal famine ignores the larger geopolitical context of World War II. Winston Churchill was not Hitler and Winston Churchill did not kill Indians. Stop your ignorance and get your education, don't be fooled by Indian propaganda of hatred, you don't have to be a scholar but don't be ignorant. Many Indians have suffered or their parents have suffered or their grandparents have suffered and Indians feel the guilt of their injuries, but they felt like losers. Not only because they lost their Indian opportunities, so they they fall for a horrible loser ideology Hindu Brahman nationalism Nazism. Indians are being lied to and misled into a path that will end in misery. Some Indians joined the BJP party or the Congress party because they are filled with hate. Others join another Hindutswa nationalist party but too many are joining because they are filled with hate and misled by horrible loser ideology of Hindu nationalism. 
Some of them join because they think they deserve more in their lives and they buy into that idea that the only way to make their lives better is to make other lives worse. Make the lives of Muslims worse, make the lives of Sikhs worse, make the lives of Manipur worse, make the lives of Pakistan worse, make the lives of British worse, make the lives of Americans worse. Some of them join because they were frustrated with the Indian government and some of them just join because everyone else is doing it. You should join political party because you are inspired by your Indian past and motivated by your Indian present to succeed and achieve and be better than you were yesterday instead of hating somebody else and wanting their lives to be worse and wanting to loot their money, their property, their country, their identity, their success. And it didn't really matter why they joined. Many are all broken in the same way. That's the bottom line here. I mean if you find yourself at the crossroads wondering if that path of hate might make sense to you for one reason or the other, or even wrapping yourself in the flag of hate, I want you to know where that path ends. I want you to see very clearly in front of you in your mind because throughout history hate has always been the easy path, the path of least resistance. I get it, and I mean it's easier to find a scapegoat for a problem than to try to make things better ourselves, right? I get it and I mean it's easier to blame the British or blame the Muslims or blame the Sikhs or blame the government or be jealous of Americans. It's easier to find the scapegoat for a problem than to try to make things better ourselves, right? But let me be clear. You would not find success on the end of that road. You would not find fulfillment or happiness because hate burns fast and bright. It might make you feel empowered for a while, but eventually, it consumes whatever vessel it fuels. It breaks you. It's the path of the weak. And that's why there has never been a successful movement based on hate. I mean think about that, the German Nazis, losers, the American South Confederacy, losers, the South Africa Apartheid Movement, losers, and the list goes on and on. I don't want you to be a loser. I don't want you to be weak. See, spend most of your life helping people find their strength. This is where the action is, strength. And despite all of the things that we may disagree about and all my friends who might say, don't talk to those people. It's not worth it, I don't care what they say. I care about you. I think you're worth it. Stop your ignorance that fuels your hatred, you don't have to be a scholar but don't be fooled by Indian lies and Indian propaganda. Find the strength inside you to educate yourself instead of being a fool. I know that nobody is perfect. I can tell this firsthand. And I can understand how people can fall into a trap of prejudice and hate. Maybe you grew up surrounded by hate or got sucked into it by some of family, your parents, your grandparents or your friends or even your school teachers or Indian politicians that push you to the extreme. I can see how it can happen. I think all of us hold some prejudice. There's no two ways about that, and we have to fight it our whole lives. I know this is not the path of least resistance. It's easier to just throw around some bogus signs claiming that you're superior to someone else than it is to actually work on becoming better yourself. It's easier to make excuses that the British conspired to hold you back than it is to admit that you just needed to work harder. It's easier to hate than it is to learn. It's easier when someone challenges you to get hurt in your feelings and to go and find some echo chamber that will tell you that you're right and they're wrong. But remember, easier isn't better. It isn't. When you spend your life looking for scapegoats, you take away your own responsibility. You remove your own power. You steal your own strength. Nobody who has chosen the easy path of hate has ever achieved fulfillment and success in life. I want to talk to you today about the rising hate we've seen all over the world. In Auschwitz Nazi concentration camp where 1.1 million men, women, and children lost their lives. Almost all of them were ruthlessly murdered simply because they were Jewish. When you walk through a place like AIDS, you feel a tremendous weight. There are reminders everywhere of the horrors that happened there. The suitcases never claimed by the prisoners who were told to remember exactly where they left their belongings so they could retrieve them after they were finished with the showers. The shoes and the teeth and their hair were taken from the murdered to be reused by the murderers to fund their evil. The logbooks with thousands of names crossed out as if a cruel accountant only measured death. 
The gas chambers with scratches on the walls from the fingernails of people who tried to hold on to life. The crematorium where the Nazis tried to erase all of the atrocities. Let me tell you something, the way that your back hits you at the very beginning is heavier than any squat I've ever done, and it never goes away. It's the feeling of history, of millions of voices that were silenced decades ago begging you not to just look at their shoes but to spend a few hours in them to imagine you were there. Because once you imagine that you arrived on that train and you were sorted into those lines and you smell the smoke that didn't smell like any wood you've ever burned before and you never saw your family coming out of those showers. And then you broke your butt off while getting almost nothing to eat until they looked more like a ghost than a person. And then when you couldn't work anymore and they considered you useless, they sent you to the showers too. Once you have spent the time to really think about all of those things, then your imagination has no choice but to start the real work. How do we stop this from ever happening again? You know after a trip to Auschwitz, you would never question why, never again, is the rallying cry of all of the people who fight to prevent another holocaust. You will never question that. But today I don't really want to talk to those people. Many men after World War II were broken men and children growing up after World War II were surrounded by these broken men. You know they drank to numb their pain, their bodies were riddled with injury and trauma from the evil war, and their hearts and their minds were equally riddled with guilt. But besides the guilt and the injuries, they felt like losers. Not only because they lost the war, but also because they fell for a horrible loser ideology. They were lied to and misled into a path that ended in misery. Some of them joined the Nazis because they were filled with hate. Some of them joined because they thought they deserved more in their lives and they bought into that idea that the only way to make their lives better was to make other lives worse. Some of them joined because they were frustrated with the government and some of them just joined because everyone else was doing it. And it didn't really matter why they joined. They were all broken in the same way. That's the bottom line here. I mean if you find yourself at the crossroads wondering if that path of hate might make sense to you for one reason or the other, or even wrapping yourself in the flag of hate, I want you to know where that path ends. I want you to see very clearly in front of you in your mind because throughout history hate has always been the easy path, the path of least resistance. I get it, and I mean it's easier to find a scapegoat for a problem than to try to make things better ourselves, right? But let me be clear. You would not find success on the end of that road. You would not find fulfillment or happiness because hate burns fast and bright. It might make you feel empowered for a while, but eventually, it consumes whatever vessel it fuels. It breaks you. It's the path of the weak. And that's why there has never been a successful movement based on hate. But remember, easier isn't better. It isn't. When you spend your life looking for scapegoats, you take away your own responsibility. You remove your own power. You steal your own strength. Nobody who has chosen the easy path of hate has ever achieved fulfillment and success in life.